Hello everyone and welcome back to the Goomba Girls YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to show you guys how you can dunk your mushroom cake so you can get multiple flushes and more mushrooms. You guys can see here I have a freshly picked mushroom cake that is ready to be dunked so that we can move on to the second flush. Um, to start, you can use regular water. It doesn't need to be filtered or anything special. So you can see here I'm taking my tap water straight from the faucet and I'm going to fully submerge this cake. A lot of the time when you're filling up your tub, you're gonna notice that the cake will come loose and start floating. This isn't a huge problem. A little bit later into the video, you're gonna see I just take an extra liner and fill that up with water and use that to hold down the cake so that it's fully submerged during the dunking process. Here you can see I'm grabbing that extra liner. I'm putting it on top, so make sure that the bottom is clean as it will be touching your cake. Fill it up fully with water until it is holding down the cake and it's fully submerged. If you need to add extra water into the bottom, feel free to. And although I do mention that the bottom of the liner should be clean, take note that you've already completed one flush, and at this point, your cake is about as resistant to contaminants as it is going to be. Um, but you also have to take note that I have experienced contamination the most after the dunking process. This is because there's really only so much you can do to prevent contamination at this point. You're in an open air environment, you're using tap water, and because of that, you have to understand that you are taking a risk every time you dunk your cake. But at the same time, it's a risk you kind of want to take. There's no point in not doing it, as if you don't, your cake's gonna dry out. It won't produce more mushrooms, as mushrooms are like 90% something water and you would end up just throwing your cake away or throwing it outside and it would be a waste. So it's always worth taking the risk to dunk your cake to try and get more flushes, but you just have to understand that the risk is there. Moving on, once your cake is fully submerged, all I do is put the lid back on, put it back where it was sitting before. It doesn't need light, it doesn't need no light. I let it sit for 12 to 24 hours and then we move on to the next step. And we're back. Technically this isn't the next step as I have two bins currently going. So this is the second bin. I'm just gonna repeat the process twice. You guys don't really need to see it again. So I'll speed it up in some parts. Um, but yeah, same process, just doing it for my second bin. Good example here too. You can see the cake has started floating. It has came completely detached from all the sides and the bottom. Um, this is going to happen pretty often, it's kind of rare that it doesn't happen, and it's really not something to worry about. It's going to be the exact same process, you may need to fill the top up with slightly more water, but yeah, same process. Also wanted to show you guys here that this pin was just slightly too big, so I went ahead and took it off so it didn't cause any problems. Um, and that's something else to know is that a lot of the times you want to get as many of these pins slash aborts off of the cake as you can before you dunk it. Um, that's because if you leave them on and they, you let them sit in the water for 12 to 24 hours, you raise the chance of them introducing contamination to your cake. You raise the chance of them rotting and molding. Um, but you also have to understand that it's not that big of a deal. If these pins are too small, it's hard to grab, you think you're going to damage the mycelium, leave them be. A lot of the times the mycelium is going to actually reclaim it and it won't be an issue at all. And here's a little clip of where I place my bins after I fill them with water. I also wanted to note that I do not leave the light on during the dunking process. This is just for um, video purposes. And we are back. 20 hours later for me and like 10 seconds for you guys. You can notice there's a lot of discoloration here in the water. Not something to worry about. That is just since it's been soaking for so long, the soil and some of the nutrients has leached out into the water. It's not a problem. We are going to dump as much excess water out as we can. You don't really want to leave any sitting in there as it could cause wet rot.
Okay, and once I have most of the extra water removed, I like to take the actual cake out and the liner and dry the bottom, ISO the bottom, as well as do that for the bottom of the bin. You can even see some of the grain um, fell over when I was mixing it into the liner and it started growing little mycelium blobs on the bottom of the bin. So we're gonna clean, ISO, dry, all of that out and get it prepped so that we can put the cake back in and move on to our second flush. And once we have the bottom of the bin sanitized and dried, place the cake back into the bin, put the lid on top, put it back in your fruiting chamber, and let it sit. This is the start of your second flush. And we're back. We're going to do the exact same process we just did, but we're doing it again for the second bin. I'll fast forward most of the parts to not bore you guys and catch you for the next step. And I'm back and I totally lied. I don't think there really is any more steps, but I did want to show you guys here. These are the brand new pins forming and they're right next to the aborts. So you can kind of tell which ones are new pins. You can kind of tell which ones are going to be aborts. I'm going to make a whole video soon on aborts, how to deal with them, if, if there's really a problem having them, if you should worry about it. Um, etc etc a lot of the times you can tell there are boards just by you can see the cap right there is turning blue and falling off and the new pins at least for this species are a little bit more rounded while the aborts start to have more of a cone shaped cap also after 24 hours i like to go through my bins and try to get any huge stems that i notice are holding and retaining a lot of water uh, I just get worried and paranoid that these are going to cause problems in the future. So I try and take them off if possible. But just remember, if it's too hard to take off and you feel like you're damaging the mycelium, don't worry about it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.